Hi guys, today I wanted to show you XProp, the new non-repetitive atlas material from the X tile family that lets you tile um, your assets uh, from a singular uh, texture atlas. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, around the project and then we're going to texture these um, crates uh, using the uh, materials. Um, <clears throat> The first thing I wanted to show you is uh, where you can find the masters. Um, and if I come here, you can see that I have uh, two folders, the Atlas masters and the color ID uh, masters. The Atlas masters are divided into uh, three subfolders, the basic, advanced, and blends. The basic uh, are um, uh, five master materials that allow you to use the uh, uh, texture uh, Atlas in a very basic uh, form, whereas the advanced have uh, features uh, that allow you to add masks, uh, add masks as normals, uh, and um, other uh, parameters. The blends are uh, basically master materials that allow you to blend between uh, different quadrants within the same uh, texture atlas. And finally, the color ID masters are uh, allow you to select parts of the quadrants of the uh, atlas based off a color ID mask that you either create or bake in a third party application. Uh, lastly, I'd like to share with you that uh, all the um, uh, master materials are paired to a non repetitive uh, function that allows you to maximize the potential of the atlas. Uh, and here I can show you an example um, uh, of a uh, part of the atlas that has been tiled. Uh, here on the left is uh, a normal tiling, whereas uh, one on the right uses the XProp uh, functions. Uh, and here on a larger surface, again, this is using a 512 uh, pixel part of the uh, atlas. And if I come and show you how it is without the um, non-repetitive function on, I can uh, switch it off here by the tiling breakup switch, and you can see um, how it looks. Um, the um, other thing I wanted to show you is uh, that for the um, advanced um, uh, section, uh, sorry, the advanced uh, uh, master materials, you do have the option to turn on off <clears throat> the atlas and use a singular uh, texture and also uh, take advantage of the non-tiling breakup, in which case you will have a non-repetitive texture uh, from a singular texture. Um, here are, uh, let's just uh, turn this uh, off. Here are the uh, quadrant uh, breakup uh, that you can uh, make in the uh, or use in the uh, in XProp. It's a four quadrant, seven, 10, 13, and 16 uh, quadrant uh, texture atlas. And of course you can use any uh, resolution uh, for that <clears throat> texture that you want. Uh, here on the uh, other side, you can uh, see the uh, color ID mask. Uh, here you have uh, a selection of colors and uh, the function or the master materials allow you to uh, select any color that uh, you create in your color ID mask to select any parts of your mesh. Uh, <clears throat> so with that, I just uh, wanted to show you um, uh, the assets that uh, we'll be uh, texturing. Uh, one last thing, uh, all the functions found in XProp are also found in XTile Plus. Um, so um, you can use the same idea if you have purchased uh, XTile uh, Plus. So uh, let me quickly show you how they look in um, uh, 3ds max here we have the um, uh, two texture set uh, setup with uh, as you can see two materials used this is the singular one and this is the color uh, ID 
uh, <clears throat> mesh that uh, we'll be baking in Substance Painter. So here I have the uh, mesh imported and I wanted to show you how to best extract the color uh, ID mask and I'm gonna quickly bake uh, the color uh, ID mask. I've selected the ID uh, parameter here and simply just uh, I'm just gonna bake the uh, mask. Uh, let's um, create a fill layer and let's find the mask. Oops, let's go into the properties and just simply drag it onto the base color and here is the mask. Um, it's done a pretty good job, but one of the problems that you will encounter in the baking process is that uh, you will have all these jaggies around and we don't like that. We want to get rid of them and a very simple way to do that is by coming here and adding a filter. And if you come into the filters tab and just take the blur uh, filter and just drag it in, you will see that now we have a much nicer and softer uh, mask ID. <clears throat> So with that, uh, I'm gonna just uh, turn it off. I wanna show you how uh, I use uh, Substance Painter as a look development tool rather than uh, as a way to actually get uh, the final textures themselves. And the way I do that usually is I come here and I can um, bake the remaining maps for our asset. I did not use uh, a high uh, poly as I did not create one, but you're more than welcome to do it. All I'm gonna do is use the low poly mesh as a high poly mesh and just bake the remaining maps. And from here, what we can do is simply use these maps to create uh, some quick uh, masks, additional masks for our asset. Uh, if I come here in the property section, I can add another filler and just change the base color to something else so we can have a better look and then just dive down to smart masks here. And from here, what we can do is simply uh, just drag in a mask. And here is uh, an example of it. Um, we can adjust the mask, of course, um, uh, as we want. We can make it stronger or less strong. Um, we can uh, add uh, another mask on top, maybe with another color so we can better see it. Uh, let's just pick the ground dirt. And here is another mask that uh, we can use. Uh, the nice thing about this, of course, is that it's uh, very easy to just export them. All we have to do is right click on the mask and then just come here, export masks to file. And you can just uh, save uh, out your masks. Once you do that, uh, let's uh, go back into Unreal and because uh, I've already done uh, that and imported the uh, textures in this uh, folder. And let's start with uh, this uh, singular uh, texture atlas uh, asset. And the way that I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna come to my color ID and I'm gonna make a uh, instance of this um, uh, material master. Uh, and let's call it create. And let's apply it to the crate and let's open it up and right here we have our um, instance uh, the first thing you'll notice is that we have a uh, color uh, ID mask uh, section and let's drag in the um, color ID that we baked here it is uh, the next thing that I want to do is uh, let's uh, import those uh, textures that we need um, and here, let's do that fairly quickly. And let's come on top here and let's uh, start adjusting our ID parameters. First, we know that we need three since we've baked uh, a color ID mask with uh, three colors. And uh, let's uh, actually go down and let's make some selections to our atlases so we can better see what we're doing. I know that the crate, uh, the wood texture is on the third quadrant in my atlas, so that's what I'm going to select. So I'm going to select the third quadrant. And if I scroll down, let's also select the fourth quadrant, which is basically my uh, metal 
part that I want to use. I'll do it also for the screws. And then uh, the thing that we need to do now is uh, adjust the color ID. So the way we can do that is by these uh, tolerance values here. Uh, let's turn on the max for the um, tolerance number one. And let's also do that for the number two. So as you can see, it's quite easy to make those adjustments. Uh, as you'll notice, we have uh, quite a low resolution on our assets, but it's very easy to fix since uh, we're using uh, tiling uh, atlas textures. So basically, all we have to do is just simply um, turn up the tiling. And for this, let's go with uh, 0.25 for the rotation. Let's do the same for the uh, middle part here. So here, let's just uh, turn this up to a very high number if you wanted to, to get some nice uh, resolution. And um, we can do the same <clears throat> for the third part. And uh, with that, we've assigned different uh, parts of the atlas to the different parts of our mesh. Um, and now what we can do is, of course, uh, play with uh, some of this uh, masking parameters. So let's start with the uh, first one. Let's come into the, um, uh, where I've saved the, um, uh, the texture uh, masks that we've uh, baked from uh, Substance Painter. And uh, let's import uh, one into the slot. Let's change the color to something a little nicer. We can come here and change the uh, contrast also to something like one, which will give us a little nicer breakup. And uh, we can also change uh, or add uh, a decal if we wanted to. Um, and I'm going to show you the best way to uh, figure out where that decal will go. The reason is that uh, if I open my decal, I'll show you that I'm using um, a texture that has been switched to clap so that uh, from uh, wrap, so basically it will not tile uh, across the surface. And once we do that, I just bring out a simple plane and um, I will throw that texture on here so I can see where it's going and quickly make the adjustments. So if I come to the scale, I'm going to make that scale Okay, something like that perhaps and then from here I'm just gonna drag this guy here and maybe here and a little here and then uh, of course we can rotate it and once I do that I don't need this and then from here we can um, actually, let's just uh, adjust the color a little, bring it down, not that much, somewhere here. And finally, let's also bring some, uh, maybe, um, okay, this is a little strong. So let's um, bring the strength down maybe. So we can, of course, uh, continue to add um, or play with the masks here and also add masks to our uh, metal parts. Uh, as I said, the nice thing about using this way, this method is that if I come back to uh, Substance Painter and I make any adjustments, I can simply come here and just uh, export mask to file and um, uh, 
uh, create a new mask to, to try out and all I have to do if I renamed it uh, or if I named it uh, with the same uh, uh, name I can come here and uh, simply re-import and you will see the update immediately uh, so here I have the two uh, texture set asset and I want to show you this as well uh, quickly I want to come and uh, show you uh, the difference, um, the subtle differences that exist between the two. Obviously, the big difference is that in this case we're using a singular uh, texture asset, and here you can have as many um, uh, texture assets, uh, texture sets as you want. So if I create a instance here, I can create one that is a wood, and I can make a duplicate. Uh, sorry, another instance and call it metal. And let's just uh, drag the one here and the one here. I hope I did the right or <clears throat> placed them in the right slots. Um, here is where we would select the atlas. But before we do that, let's uh, come up actually and uh, say that we will be using a channel packed uh, version of this uh, master this instance uh, rather and uh, if I come to the texture let's quickly drag them in and I did it wrong but that's okay so let me just uh, drag this in here and the metal in here so <clears throat> right yeah. so the wood part is um, again I want to select the th um, the quadrant three again we can um, increase our tiling uh, we can rotate and we can uh, add our masks as we did to the other um, oh here yep let me just change the color right so uh, one thing that um, I want to show you is the difference uh, between the two is that in the uh, advanced version of the Atlas uh, masters you have this uh, switch called use mask as normal and once I do that you have a parameter here that uh, becomes visible in which case I can use the actual uh, mask that I've uh, imported uh, as a normal, which is a, a cool feature of uh, the advanced version. And of course, you can do the same. You can add the um, uh, decal and other uh, masks as you go along. Uh, one thing that I didn't show here and I want to show you is that uh, you can easily do the same in the um, advanced version but let's uh, do it here you have the ability to turn on a, uh, a detail mask uh, normal uh, and I have one here and I wanted to show you how easy it is to add uh, more detail or more textures to your um, uh, assets so simply just by adding a uh, an additional normal of course you could use this uh, additional normal for any of the uh, high low baked uh, normals that uh, you uh, create in uh, substance uh, painter uh, so quickly uh, let's uh, do the same for the metal part um, again um, let's uh, come here and turn on the channel packed version and um, let's uh, show you here Right. again I want the metal part and as you can see it's extremely low resolution but no worries we just need to tile this and we can pump it to any amount that we want if we see that we're running into any tiling issues we can simply break up the tiling using the tiling breakup uh, if it's not necessary then we just don't need to use it um, the other thing that I wanted to show you is that um, 
obviously we have the masks that we can also add as in the uh, previous uh, master um, you also have a self shadow um, uh, parameter here that um, perhaps for this case may or may not show anything because obviously you would need to see the um, um, yeah the, the the height it's based on height so for this it will show better here so if I come here as you can see you have the ability to add some uh, sort of uh, self shadowing um, from a height from the uh, uh, floor uh, which also can be um, a nice um, effect uh, for certain uh, assets. Um, so uh, with that, um, I hope you uh, saw uh, how you can use a singular uh, texture atlas uh, to texture uh, uh, loads of assets within your projects. Um, I hope you found it useful. Again, uh, I want to say that all the functions are available in uh, X uh, Tile uh, Plus. Um, and um, uh, please uh, leave me a comment or uh, if you have any questions, uh, send me an email um, or leave it below. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and good luck with your uh, projects.